no denying that the Paris nightlife is magical. And you can't talk about the Paris nightlife without talking about the Moulin Rouge. And we got lucky, really lucky. A friend told someone at the Moulin Rouge about our channel and they liked what they saw. So we got invited backstage behind the curtains to see the rehearsals and watch choreographers, seamstresses, costume handlers doing the changes in between scenes. And we got to interview dancers to find out what it's like to be in the show. So in this video, we'll give you an insider's sneak peek of the Moulin Rouge. Are you ready? I'm so ready to go. <laughs> I bet you are. On Eva. One of the things that has always fascinated me is what's happening behind the curtain. So today, we're going to go backstage where the showgirls are rehearsing for the show tonight. So I can't wait to go and see it. Follow me. There are 80 dancers in the show, and they come from all over the world. 60 of them are women, and 20 are men. And every couple of years, the Moulin Rouge travels the globe doing auditions to find the best talent there is. These girls are glamorous by night, but as you can see, they're just like the girl next door here in rehearsal. A lot of them come from Australia. In fact, right now, 22 of the 60 female dancers are Australian. It's not easy to win a spot in the show, but these young dancers are building a career doing what they love in a supportive sisterhood. One and two, pause it. From here, boom. Ha, ha. Oh, 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 boom. To be able to do this, you have to have bent knees. So we're right here on left stage where the costumes are. And the show that's currently running is called Fury, and it's been running continuously for 22 years. So you can imagine the wear and tear that these costumes get and what it might take to keep them looking fresh and crisp like they did on the first day the show came out. So let's go upstairs and meet the people who make this magic happen. Let's go. Every night, there are many rips and tears, lost buttons and sequins, and feathers flying, and beads and jewels coming off. It's a full-time job having the dancers look the same show after show. And it's important that the fabrics and textures and colors match, and that can be a real challenge. The Moulin Rouge has a team of 80 people, costume designers, specialty repair people, and seamstresses working in several workshops behind the scenes to make sure that the ruffles and hats and headdresses all look fabulous night after night. When booking your tickets for the Moulin Rouge, you have two options. The first one is a dinner at 7 p.m. plus a live band on stage, and then the show starts at 9 o'clock. And the second option is just the show at 9 p.m. with a bottle of champagne or with some drinks. Now on weekends and in season, they have an additional show at 11 o'clock at night that you can also choose as an option. Now some people may expect the food to be like a dinner theater, but this is a maître restaurateur here, which means that every Everything has to be made in-house with fresh ingredients. Here, the dinner alone is fabulous. And they also told us that they serve more champagne at the Moulin Rouge than any other place in the world. So, you know, you might want to pop a bottle while you're here. 
So we're gonna go interview the dancers and I'm so excited. And I've heard that of the 60 dancers, 22 of them are from Australia. So how does a girl from Australia end up in Paris, France dancing? So we're gonna interview two women from Australia who came all the way over here to build a career doing what they love. So let's go upstairs to the dressing room and find out. Let's go meet them. Hi. Hi, Cara. Well, personally, we're all classically trained, so that's, you learn, you know, things that everyone knows, tap, jazz, ballet, contemporary, everyone has a wide variety of um, dance skill. When I started to learn the showgirl style, so the walks and the hips and the presence and everything, this feels good. And this also, is what I want to do. It's a confidence thing as well. Yeah. It brings out this side of you. Yeah. You didn't know you had. I was very shy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I've become this, like, like confident person, which yeah. I never thought I could be, which is something that I think the showgirl style really like helps bring out. Whole like, oh, I'm a woman, yeah. you know. In terms of sacrificing to come here, you sacrifice your lifestyle, your comfort, your home, friends and family, um, time differences. Um, you learn everything from how to handle your own money at a young age if you oh, come young, so. paying <laughs> rent, bills, everything, and you're doing it all alone in a country that speaks a different language. Yeah. So. It's a big challenge that you have to be prepared for and you got to want it. you got to really want this yeah. job to make it work because it's a lifestyle. You grow up straight away though, don't you? Yeah, you, you become an adult in a few months. You have yeah. to, you, have you don't to. have a choice. Yeah. Right. It's obviously a very different culture, like straight off the bat, but I think that's something you expect. I think Paris is really romanticised. It's the city of love, the city of lights. So there initially is a massive excitement, like an Australian coming from an island of what's known as beaches and desert, uh -huh. to in the middle of a city with so much more culture and history straight away. So the first, for me, three months, I was just taking it all in. Everything was amazing, the food, the bakeries, the architecture, like all of it, I was just like, Oh my goodness, it's all so different and new. And then after the three months, you start to find your groove, the lifestyle they live here. Obviously, you're in the show, so your hours are different because we work at the night time. So you get to learn your daily routine that incorporates the French habit. I don't think it's cutthroat. I think everyone here is like, you have to be 18 to be in the show, so we're all adults. And I think everyone here is for their own career. Like, if you want to do well here, you're going to work hard. You're not going to throw someone else under the bus. Like, we all worked hard to get here. We're all capable dancers. There's no need for that sort of, like, in the movies, you know, to push someone down the stairs, right. all that it's kind of stuff. Like, yeah. No. Um, in winter, we do one shows during the week and two shows Friday and Saturday. And in summer, for six months, we do two shows every night. And that's quite full on. That's like, that's fun. hard work. It's really hard work. Usually, we arrive around 7 30. I'll do my makeup for about half an hour, make sure everything's good, and then I'll do a bit of a warm up. It's important to do the warm up before the show, because otherwise, you can seriously injure yourself, I think, especially with the girls who do can can, because that's quite intense. So, normally, on a one day off, I personally do nothing. Mm. I rest my body, I sleep in. It takes me a full day to physically recover from the week. Technically, you know, obviously we're artists, we're creating a show and we're dancing and creating shapes and movements, right. but it's, it's a full-time athletic job. You know, we warm up like athletes, we train like athletes, like we do that intensive training at the start and especially on the can-can that's cardiovascularly hugely athletic. Yeah. But it's a skill that we've acquired and trained for our whole life. Yeah. If anyone or any of your viewers have ever done like a high intense cardio workout kind of thing or even a Pilates or something, like it's doing that but smiling and looking good yeah. and being seen <laughs> and it's like that's an extra level of, of you know effort on top of the physicality of it all. Okay, so the dinner service is over. People coming for the show only are arriving and lining up outside. It's time for us to go backstage and see it from that perspective. Now, from what we gathered so far, they told us to make ourselves as small as possible because there's going to be 60 showgirls plus 20 male dancers and all the costume handlers all moving around back there during the show. So we expect it to be super busy. All right, let's go.
To a rookie like me, the atmosphere backstage feels chaotic. There is a lot going on, but for the dancers and the staff, everything is calculated to precision. People are coming and going and changing costumes, stretching for the next act, and they all know where they're supposed to be. This is a well-oiled machine. I'm